welcome to part two of the history of punk rock. Uh, it's the early 70s, and some of these countercultural um, Velvet Underground, Garage Rock, and Iggy Pop influence scenes are starting to kind of sprout up around the United States. So uh, let's go ahead and kick it off with. One, two, three, four, five, six! Jonathan Richmond and the Modern Lovers. So, Jonathan Richmond was from Boston and he was obsessed with the Velvet Underground. As a matter of fact, this song, Roadrunner, is a derivative of the same chord structure as Sister Ray. Remember that Velvet Underground song from 1968 that we heard? Well, by now, the Velvet Underground was long gone. They disbanded after 1970, uh, their last album, Loaded. And, uh, but their influence was still felt around the United States. There were, uh, there were multiple scenes sprouting up, uh, there was a notable one also in Cleveland that I haven't mentioned yet. Uh, there were bands like Electric Eels, Rocket from the Tombs, and I think Devo was also from Cleveland. Um, this song, Roadrunner, uh, sounds very punk rock to me. It was recorded in 1972 and produced by John Cale as well, uh, but it wouldn't be released until 1976 after the punk scene had already exploded. So I think he didn't get the credit he deserved. All right, so it's 1973, and we are back in New York City. Uh, this band, the New York Dolls, uh, were very influential in the development of punk rock. They all dressed up like women, that was kind of their gimmick, and they performed at this venue called the Mercer Arts Center. Uh, one of the future members of the Ramones also used to perform there with his, uh, with his band. Uh, the Mercer Arts Center attracted kind of uh, a lot of the artsy types. Um, as well as other musicians like David Bowie, members of Roxy Music, and um, Malcolm McLaren. Malcolm McLaren was husband of fashion designer Vivian Westwood, and um, he was from the UK, and he saw what was going on in New York, and he wanted to export it to the UK. So um, if it weren't for the New York Dolls, um, the punk scene in the UK wouldn't have started the way it did. Uh, Malcolm McLaren was sort of their UK manager, um, and unfortunately the band would fall apart the following year. So it's 1974. These two Virginia transplants, Tom Miller and Richard Myers, um, moved to New York together. They bonded over their love of 19th century French poetry, as well as similar musical tastes. They liked the Velvet Underground, uh, Garage Rock, um, the New York Dolls. And so they started a band called the Neon Boys. They later changed their name to Television and adopted the pseudonyms Tom Verlaine and Richard Hell. Um, while they were walking in New York City one day, by chance they stumbled across a club called CBGB. That stood for Country Bluegrass and Blues. That was the type of music that people would play there. They lied to the owner about what type of music they played to secure a residency there. But um, they didn't need to, because when they played there, they kind of blew the owner away, and he really liked what he was hearing. Pretty soon, a bunch of New York acts started migrating to CBGB. Um, Patti Smith, the Ramones, uh, Talking Heads, the drummer of whom was actually Jerry Harrison from The Modern Lovers. We went over them earlier. Um, this band, Rocket from the Tombs, I mentioned them earlier, they were from that Cleveland scene. Uh, not to mention Iggy Pop and Lou Reed from the Velvet Underground um, also migrated there. So finally the scene in New York kind of had a central hub um, where uh, they, could, uh, they could learn from each other and cultivate this scene that was going on. So it's 1975, uh, poet Patti Smith uh, I mentioned her, she was uh, actually one of the first performers at CBGB, and she shared a residency there with television. She was the first from this uh, CBGB movement to release an album on a big record label. Um, this is regarded by many music historians as the first proper uh, punk album. It's called Horses. Uh, the song is, this song is Gloria. And uh, it, it's kind of a, it's kind of a reworking of uh, the, of the garage rock song Gloria. Um, 
So, punk rock has officially been born. Okay, here's where punk rock really exploded in the United States. Uh, the release of the Ramones eponymous 1976 album um, was the first major punk rock release. Um, hundreds if not thousands of bands formed in the wake of this album's release as well as the Ramones' first uh, major tour. Um, at this point, uh, punk rock was a really marketable force, so record companies started uh, snatching up as many little punk bands as they could. So 1977 marks the release of the Sex Pistols' first and only studio album. If you remember, I mentioned uh, this guy Malcolm McLaren. He was like the, U the UK manager for the New York Dolls, and he kind of exported the punk thing to the UK. Well, he and his wife, Vivian Westwood, opened up this shop called Sex. I, uh, I think they sold fetish wear as well as the New York punk influence kind of stuff, like safety pin clothes and stuff like that. There were these kids that would hang around the shop, and they were in a band called The Strand, named after a Roxy Music song. Malcolm McLaren basically brought them together and said, here's what you're going to do, and prompted them to do the punk thing, except in the UK. Uh, they became the Sex Pistols. The Sex Pistols had kind of a similar effect that the Ramones had. Uh, the release of their first album as well as their first major tour prompted a bunch of British kids to start punk bands of their very own. After this point, punk kind of spidered out in uh, many different directions. Uh, a bunch of uh, derivative genres as well as subgenres started sprouting after this point. So I think this is where I'm going to leave the, uh, the early history of punk rock. I want to give a special shout out to this awesome website, fastandbulbous.com, for uh, chronicling in detail the history of the New York scene and the export to the UK. Um, without it, I wouldn't know any of this.